When I talk about the game of Destiny and how it got me hooked to the series, I'm mostly talking about raids in the game. Most of Destiny can be broken down into segments ranging from very easy to rip your hair out difficult. The reason we play the most difficult content isn't just for the challenge, although that's a big part. No, we mostly play it for the meaningful loot. While strikes can provide nice legendaries and the nightfall strike can provide a bridge to get exotics, the raid is where Destiny's identity really comes to life. A place where guardians can unite in a six player activity that has deep and meaningful mechanics and difficult fights. I think it's amazing that Destiny even has raids when a small but very dedicated player base plays them. But there is a reason why that initial risk paid off for Bungie. So let's talk about the raid that quite literally saved the game of Destiny. You may sit there and think, why are so many people dedicated to that game I keep typing in YouTube comments is dead? Well, let a guy whose whole entire outlook of a series has been molded by one activity, a whole community of people whose experience was changed by one activity. Let me tell you why we keep coming back and why we keep getting so excited for new Destiny DLCs. Let me tell you about the Vault of Glass. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. I really think 100,000 subs is possible by the end of this year, so if you want to help, please consider liking and subscribing with the bell turned on. Thank you. Whenever we talk about the beginning of Destiny 1, we always seem to mention how it was a mess. A game with huge difficulty spikes and very, very grindy systems. One where you had to treat it almost like a job to be able to keep up and play well. Lots of players hated this, but to be honest, I, I kind of liked it. Yeah, believe it or not, my high schooler self loved having to work my butt off for the best loot and get demolished by some of the hardest activities in the game, like the Valis to Arc Nightfall, which Bungie had to nerf because it was so difficult. Something else that I absolutely loved and was a staple of the game was exploring the planets. It was always a blast jumping into the areas not knowing where anything was and getting destroyed by question mark enemies which told me I had to level up and get good if I wanted a shot at beating them. Not only that, but exploring led you to many areas that hadn't even been a part of the main story and some areas for future content, which got everyone speculating and kept the mystery of what was coming alive. I want to specifically focus on one area on Venus which was a large mystery during that first week, the Ishtar Sink. A large circular vault-like door stood there with high level enemies around it and no way in. With the few legendary guns in my hand and being only level 22, the enemies just one shot me from any distance. You gotta understand, the level cap was 20 and the grind for hire was not an easy task in the slightest. Going up even a level or two meant a heavy time investment, but I wanted to see what was behind the vault door and so did a lot of other people. Come to find out this was an activity coming soon, a whole 10 days after the September 6th release of the game. The Vault of Glass was set to come out on September 16th, 2014. It was time to grind. There is not a lot of footage from the day one raid race like there is from raids more recent like Last Wish and Garden of Salvation. However, this is less of a race and more of a mystery. This was the first raid ever. Nobody knew what to expect from a first person looter shooter having a raid and it's safe to say, Bungie delivered on a grand scale. The raid started out with a bunch of hardcore World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy, Diablo type of grinders being the only ones ready for what was to come. I remember hearing legend of how long it took the first group to beat the raid, and just the time sync alone was intimidating. 
14 hours was the first group's completion time, and take into account that 1,605 deaths the team of Prime Guard suffered was not going to be easy. I will be using my own footage of the raid as well as using some clips from Dado's first time through as he was a part of Prime Guard Team 2 who came in second place. There's only one clip of Team 1 and that's at the victory of the raid, but both teams went in completely blind. So let's begin with the opening act, one that is still unique to Destiny, Raising the Spire. Raising the Spire was as simple as mechanics get for raids, stand on a plate, hold the plate from enemies, progress through. What made this one unique was that it was a part of a patrol space, which meant players who were just exploring Venus could help you open the vault door and kill ads for you. This is the only raid where that is the case, making the world feel more alive in Destiny. Something to note here is that when Bungie was developing this, they made the Vaults of Glass area here on purpose as a patrol space since the area was so big and had so much going on that for memory issues, they made it a part of the patrol space too. Turned out really, really well. What you may not have also known is that there's an arcade machine on the right side of a platform hidden away. Easter egg or joke? Let me know. After your team has finally done the impossible of standing in one place and shooting, it's time to move in to the trial of Kaber. It's, it's opening, it's coming. See that, Bungie? Oh yeah. shit. Okay, here it goes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Guys, reload everything. Get, don't know get ready for a possible out. boss, possible boss. Reload, reload, reload. Ready? Okay, well, we'll don't know, we don't know. I don't want one freaking bean coming in. Crazy, good shit. Guys, it's clear. Let's yeah, go. Job, Game oh, time. Yeah. Come on, Let's do it. boys. This area immediately had a chest that if you would open and your teammates weren't there, the loot was probably gone due to it despawning. It also had two paths to take. The main path was to the left and provided some simple jumps to get to the next area. Well wait, we, we have to see somebody go first. I'll, I'll do it. Uh, to do I'll it? do it. Ready? Just in I'll case it. It, it disappears and then... Well we, how do we know it's going to come back up? Like what's the time to? Oh yeah, time? in the video, in the video everybody had to go at the same time. I go. Oh, go. Whoops. You know, I'm gonna laugh if none of that despawns. It does. Go, go, oh, go. Where, where's the next one? Okay, where's the where next are we one? Going? Well, the other path was a secret passageway underground, which led to an extra chest and a different route to the same area. I want to stress that it's things like this that make the Vaults of Glass feel special. That exploration and reward for secret hunting really stands out in the grand scheme of raids, and we are only really just getting started. Once down the Templar as well, we are placed in a room that Team Prime Guard would face for many, many hours. And that is because it was mechanically challenging. It had difficult enemies, and a 30 second revive timer if a teammate were to die. Nobody knew a meta, so primary exotics took the forefront. But it was time for the encounter, Confluxes. Once again, to a player nowadays, this is a very simple mechanic and even then it was pretty easy to grasp. Confluxes had the players defending one Conflux from enemies, sacrificing themselves, and wiping your whole team. The best weapon for this was the Galahorn, but of course this was... Wait. Wait. Xur sold Galahorn that day. Most teams still didn't go into the raid with it though, so I, 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 I digress. Confluxes were as simple as defend one in the middle, then one on the left and right, with the final round having all three to defend. With the Templar, the first boss in the raid shooting at you from a distance the whole time. You knew a fight was coming. What? <laughs> Guys, spawn restricted. Get ready. Defend the conflux. Right, right left, left side, left side. Oh, Jesus. Holy Templar fuck. right in front. What shield is that? What shield is that? Oh, my boy. Um, arc, maybe? Uh, run, Guys, move, 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 move. Bowl, move. We are pretty scared right now. To add on, this was not easy because of the Minotaurs that wanted to destroy you and the new enemy to the Vaults of Glass, Fanatics Out for Blood. Fanatics on death or explosion created a green pool which, if stood in, meant you were marked for negation. If you were marked, you had to book it to the light in the middle, but more of this later too. 
Most teams in the downtime in between rounds of confluxes, when the confluxes would disappear for a moment, ran into this tiny crack in the wall to hide away or got up top somehow or another to avoid confrontation with these ads altogether. Once your team finally beat this, you received nothing. Yeah. That's right, nothing for the confluxes. This would lead to checkpoint farming on LFG at the next encounter's oracles. Since confluxes took forever and didn't reward a single thing. More on the loot though, later. Next up in the same space was the- Oh, oh, what is that? Oh, oh my, oh lord. It's oracles, yeah baby, oracles. These little gold beams of light and awesome bell-like sounds were brand new here too. Do, do ammo runs right now, A ammo, 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 yeah. ammo. Oh, no. oh, what's happening? I'm Destroy, I'm the okay, Destroy the oracles, Destroy the oracles. Back up, back up a little bit. You're ready to watch middle, I'm gonna rock it as soon as I see somebody. Okay. Somehow oh, I got Whoa, it. what Shit, is what that? The, that? What the crap are these? Left, left, Get back. left and right. I'm just getting held back. You guys shoot as soon as you see it. You have to shoot as soon as you see it. What is it? You shoot it, it's the oracles. Yeah, it's, it's the oracles. Oh boy. With the Templar constantly shooting at you like it was with confluxes, you were waiting for that moment to strike. This encounter had seven spots for oracles total. One in the center stairs, three on the left side, three on the right. Here's the catch though. Other than the Minotaurs, Goblins, and Harpies attacking, there was now Hobgoblins attacking from the sides of the arena. This caused all sorts of deaths because Hobgoblins would respawn pretty often, so your knowledge and map positioning were key here. Or, if you had Icebreaker, you could cheese this, but more on the cheese later in the video. If you were to let one oracle last more than 15 seconds, it meant you were marked for negation and had to go into the middle to cleanse. This would also restart that round, and only so many cleanses were allowed just like in confluxes. Ooh, I have up top, up top. Guys, I'm making a report. Oh, I'm marked, yeah, I got marked, marked by an marked. oracle. Yeah. Go in the mid, go in the mid. Minotaurs. Gosh freaking dang it, that's what it is. Yep. Run, 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 run. I got, okay, wow, that was close for everybody. Oh, lots run, of back, run, back, side, run back, run back, run back, run back. After seven, yes, seven rounds of oracles, you were finally done. You amassed that sweet, sweet loot like ascendant ener energy. What the f did you just say to me? Also, if you were lucky, and I mean lucky, you got the boots, maybe a chest piece or, or gloves but most of us just got energy or shards. The gear in this raid was the best for levels and even offered perks to assist you in the raid, making its RPG elements come to life. Having mods on the gear just be stationary to the gear is something that I wish was in the game right now. But moving on now to the first boss in any raid and still one of the best ever made, the Templar. Nine shots, I will take it. Send in energy. Send there energy. we go. Oh, okay. nice. Yeah. I just got the Templar. Rare boots. Nice. Yeah. Get, get, get uh, ammo. Yeah, everyone run ammo, yeah, get shoot everything. It, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it. You gotta pick it up. I got a shield. Dude. What the f? Oh, Bob, to behind what? us. Whoa. Behind us. Get the f holy flick back. Come on, he's gonna lose that shield. Come on, lose that shield. What do I do with the shield? Defend yourself, dude. The Templar is what I think a lot of bosses should strive to be in the game of Destiny. A high risk, high reward boss with stakes like no other and rewards for your time. The Templar had been shooting at you for the past two encounters. Now it was time to take revenge. The fight starts out with one of the best relics in any Destiny experience, the shield. The shield had lots of attacks like the simple light swipe, the hard hitting heavy shoulder check like a hockey player, the jump and swipe for extra movement, the jump and heavy attack for a powerful slam, the shield for you and your allies like a mobile titan bubble, and the super which was for damage and to break the Templar shield. All of these culminated greatly and no relic in Destiny 1 would ever match it. The fight was really simple by today's standards, but I want to stress that the fight did some things a lot of fights in the games do not. A high skill ceiling for high risk, high reward. 
The fight started with the relic holder having to kill some ads. The holder and the others had to kill, yep, you guessed it, two oracles at the same time. And then the Templar was right after, and how you knocked down the Templar shield was by popping the super with the relic shield when it came up. Next, a shield spawned on top of you which you had to destroy, or in Datto's case, try to walk through. I kind of want to try my super. What's your super? I don't know. Is this the bubble shield? I have no idea. No, it doesn't try. Hurt. try. Guys, guys, yeah. the okay. blue orbs, is there any way you can shoot them when they're above his head? Here we go. Right. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try my super. Oh, oh that's yeah, money. Down, Shoot him. Down. Oh what? I got it. I got I'm it. I got it. The shield yeah, was around guys, me. I, what I'm happened? Tra I'm trapped with fuck. I was trapped too. Okay. Okay. So my I super to shoot a rocket. knocks I'm it off. I'm I'm I know. I just, I just used the shield. I just used the shield. It's coming back. Dude, it's coming I'm, back. I'm, I'm detained. I know. I'm I know. Keep moving. You're, you're slow. You're just slow. Keep moving out of the shield. I got I got it next. I got it next. Everyone group guys, up. Group up on me. Group up on me. Group now. Nice. 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 Three, two, one. That was close, dude. I thought Cracker, I was... you got me? Good, oh, shit, good, good shit. Freaking shield. Wow. Wow. I'm dead. I'm dead. Pick it up. 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 The, orc, the, the relic. After you and your team pierced the shield, it was time for some damage. You could get a little bit in at a time and then start over again with the mechanics again or the relic holder could hop over to where the boss was going to teleport and block the teleport completely, allowing for damage phases to go on infinitely. This was the risk and reward factor here, and what cemented that was an extra reward for doing so in the form of, well, planetary materials. But hey, it was something. Also, there were so many ways to approach this fight. The first was how we listed, do a little bit of damage at a time and start over. The next one we listed was the hardest by jumping on the teleport spots for fast damage because the boss could never put its shield back up when doing so. And now here comes the other one. Sit in a spot and have the relic holder hold up the shield for you. This would cleanse any negation the boss did to you if the oracles stayed up for too long allowing you to just build super with the shield and damage. This took a while, but was how lots of teams did it the first few times. Sit on a rock outside the area and wait. Super boring, but we wanted the loot. Once again, we will get to the cheese later. After you finally fought your way through and conquered this boss, it was loot time. He's, I'm dead. He's, he's down, he's down. Grab it, grab it, grab it. Get the shield, get the shield, get the shield. Grab the shield. Got it. Where the hell is it? Grab it. I got it. Got I got it. it. All right, got it. Got okay. it. Everything's on cooldown. There's a water dawn. Go beat the ads. Cleanse, 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 cleanse. cleanse, cleanse. cleanse. It's, it's water still dawn. down. On. Cleansing the water dawn. As soon as it's up. Nice. I'm going to revive. I'm going to revive. I got four seconds. All right, I got you. I got you. I got you, Cracker. Thank you, Danny. We got super, we gotta go now. Go. Yeah, go do it now. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Come on. Hurry. Down, 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 get down. Him, get him, get him. I'll focus on the boss. Come on. Yeah, yeah, baby. Get that. Guys, right, stay alive. Clear, clear, clear alive. ads, clear ads. ads. Send in shard. Three send in energy, that's all you're gonna freaking give me. Oh, yeah, you should. Oh my. You see oh, that, Bungie? You see that? Boy. Now that's a good fight right there. Okay, guys, like switch channels real quick. Like, Great yeah. fight. What could you get? Well, normal mode had the loot pool of the boots, gloves, and chest piece again, but for the guns, we had the found verdict. A shotgun which fired fast, hit hard, did extra damage to the oracles, and came with the perk final round, allowing it to do so much damage on that final shot. If you got the Sniper Predest Revenge, it came with Quick Draw to pull it out faster, Feeding Frenzy to reload the Sniper quickly after a kill, and Firefly to pop some heads and blow them all up in your path. With, of course, some extra Oracle damage. Next was the Heezen's Vengeance, a rocket with tripod for three rockets in the mag, cluster bombs which made it so when you shot an enemy, it would blow up a bunch of bombs on the ground, and you guessed it, extra oracle damage for the raid. Finally, from normal mode, corrective measure. 
the very powerful heavy machine gun with a ton of ammo from the perk surplus which had ammo scavenger built into it for more ammo too and came with more ammo in the magazine. Pair that with Field Scout for more starting ammo and Persistence for more accuracy the longer you fire and you have an elite combo. Oh, also, more Oracle damage, baby! These were the weapons for the normal loot pool, and for this fight, they made it feel super special for your time invested, as they were by far the best legendary options outside of maybe a god roll or two for the everyday player. This, like every other raid inside of Destiny 1, also had no rally flags, so heavy ammo and special ammo synthesis were your best bet. Once you won, it was time for the drop to the Gorgon's Labyrinth. Before I go any further into the video, I want to ask you a question. What made the Vault of Glass special for you? For me, it was the mystery and reward for your exploration, as well as the loot itself. Moving on to the Gorgon's Labyrinth though, something to note here is that the giant drop was designed intentionally to scare players away from falling all that way, as in Halo, a drop that far probably meant death. But in Destiny, you could definitely survive. Oh, we got we a all, oh. We all need to die. We all need to die. Okay, pretty sure. So, pretty sure I can. Jump off. Everyone jump. Geronimo! Watch a star pack at the boss. They wouldn't do that. We already got lead. Guys, <laughs> yes, I made it all the way to the bottom. Is everyone dead? Uh, I want to. No. I want to jump again. Make it to the bottom, guys. What are you doing? I want to jump again. All right, yeah, jump down. Come help me. I'm on. I've got ads over here. All right. All right, just tap it before you uh, before you die. What are gorgons? Oh. Okay. Gorgons gaze on me. Watch it. I don't know what it is. Gorgon's gaze. Oh, I'm dead. Oh, okay, maybe we shouldn't. Engage. This was the main path, but the other path, which is a fan favorite would have players talking for a while and would spawn so many theories and an eventual quest. Remember that room I talked about for confluxes where players would hide? Yeah, that room actually became a secret passageway after you had beaten the Templar. The room had a chest with some planetary materials, but under, if you crouched, it was a different path entirely. This consisted of dropping down all the way through rubble everywhere, and pieces of Venus mixed with the Vex architecture, an infinite wonder of where you were supposed to go. The correct path was all the way down and then to the left, where a secret chest was waiting. If you were dropping from the main fall area, that meant you had to jump up to this chest. There was an empty room to the right side too. This room looked like it was supposed to have a chest, but alas, nothing was there. For now. Back to the main secret chest, this one had a chance to drop the class item from the raid and exotics. If you play Destiny 2 nowadays, you know that exotics aren't the main grind, but back in Destiny 1, especially in vanilla, nobody knew what could be in that chest what wonders you could find. So much potential and excitement for the mystery of what you could get was endless. So much. Should have, I should have given you like a... <laughs> you don't have a go? Oh, I got it! Yeah, I got it! Yes! Yeah! yeah! Oh my god! Wow! I got it! Yeah! I got it! Wow! I got it! Yes! Oh my god, it's done! Oh, a thousand hours! Oh my god, I got it. But mostly ascended shards. Now, on to Gorgons, an enemy that we haven't seen return outside of the Vault of Glass. These harpies were all bosses with how much health they had, and they had this mysterious white glow to them, once again being a new enemy to the game. This area had another hidden chest which could drop exotics, but if you got caught, the Gorgons would kill you and your chances of getting the chest. 
So I should probably explain how the Gorgons work now, right? Gorgons were a sneak encounter with some way ahead of their time AI. All right, all right. First Maybe of all, a little bit he's, forward. He's looking up there. Hey, this route, sick. Maybe don't melee and make him look up again. <laughs> He's like, what is that? Nice wasting seven minutes. <laughs> he just he's turned around. He's actually coming back. <laughs> hey, Damn it, I'm not. Evan, if you melee him, <laughs> he's gonna. <laughs> can you please kick Evan from the game so I can get through the? Evan's like, yeah, I want to get all these raids done, but I also want to spend four hours in the Gorgon's maze. These Gorgons were on a set path, but any noise they heard, like double jumping, gliding, shooting, even falling, would get picked up and they would find and kill you. Not to mention, they were already almost impossible to kill at this point in the game, really making them a force to be reckoned with. Nothing in Destiny still, to this day, compares to the sneak encounter that the Gorgons provided, although some have definitely tried. Um, okay. Wait, 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 I wait. see it, I see it. What is it? Look, look where I'm aiming at. I'm here, I'm here, poke, where? XCC, do you see my laser for a split seconds? Yeah, what about there? Over there, there's something glowing. Over there, there's a shiny thing. Bring I'm, a spore I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make there. it. You polymerize something and you give it the light for it to for it to do photosynthesis. Should I go across? Should I go across, folks? Team Prime Guard actually took a really long time on this encounter because nobody knew where the exit was, and there was always that one guy that got caught. Once you finally got to the rock spot, then split the two Gorgons at the end, it was time for the jumping puzzle and the rumored six chest. You may hear people make jokes about the six chest when you raid in Destiny or even other games for that matter. Well, this all came from one specific area in the Vault of Glass, the jumping puzzle. This puzzle was actually inspired by Mega Man? The jumping puzzle was inspired by Mega Man. I'm sure those who played Mega Man 2 remember the disappearing blocks during Heat Man's stage. This is where the jumping puzzle was in part inspired from. Also a cool fact is that the team at Bungie left this stupid crack on the floor that makes you slip there on purpose to have some fun with you. Real, uh, real clever guys. These specific platforms weren't the only route to the end of the room though. No, actually there was an alternate cave to the left and when you dropped down the platform there was a small room with a place where a chest could be? What was this all about? Was it for later? Is there a secret we didn't know about? To add on, there was a portal that may look familiar if you've seen my video on the Whisper of the Worm, or if you have done the secret chest in that mission yourself. The portal to the other side, one that in the days of the Vault of Glass release, Raid Secrets Reddit would have their hands full, and one that we wouldn't know the other side until the Whisper of the Worm mission came out. After you finally made it through that jumping puzzle and that crack on the ground, you made it to what can only be described as the coolest looking door in the game, and BOOM! The Vault of Glass was revealed. The gatekeeper fight was pretty simple. Shoot the gatekeeping Hydra, then stand on some plates to activate something. What is that something though? Well, this fight had two portals. One that led to Mars, Future, or Red Room as some like to call it, while the other led to Venus, Past, or Green Room. The gatekeeper upon death dropped a relic for one player to pick up. This relic was for one main reason to defend your teammates from getting killed by minotaurs. One thing to note here is again, a new enemy look is on display, which was brand new to the series. 
precursor vex making the fight really feel like you were breaking into a long lost vault to steal the loot. When two players each, four total moved into the portals with one person holding a plate outside the portal to keep it open, the struggle on the inside was killing the Hydra and the adds as fast as possible, while also trying to not become blind from the marked with the void debuff. Once they were dead, you had to grab a relic from the inside, and this made you utilize the relic shield to cleanse you and your teammates if you wanted to escape. Meanwhile, on the outside, it was defending a plate from minotaurs, goblins, and hobgoblins. Team Prime Guard would also learn some serious lessons here with trial and error. This one's shut down. Like, you guys... Like, but we should just work on it. this striker. Let's go to the other side. Let's just work on this one gate first. That's what I was saying. Let's, right. let's get everything learned. You succumb to the oracles. Why are we succumbing to the oracles? Because we have to have both gates open at the same time. Yep. Great. So I told you guys how this fight goes down, and yeah, it does in today's game go like that. But back then, there were all kinds of different strategies, from sending in three people on the inside and capturing one plate at a time, or sending in just one for the really ballsy. Once you were finally done, you had a brawl to defend the middle conflux from minotaurs spawning from all directions, and coming out of the teleporters. The top of the stairs too. Remember, a death on somebody holding a relic meant someone else had to pick up the relic or everyone died. I would probably say that this was the hardest fight in the entire raid for reasons we will get to later, but there was a lot going on here, especially for people who weren't really trained for something like this in Destiny raids. This is where most deaths most likely took place for Team Prime Guard. After you won, the loot pool was just the same as the Templars fight, but let's be real, you were just getting shards here again, weren't you? Now it was time for our level 28 and final encounter, Atheon. Watch it, watch it. He's, he's stop, stop stairs, stop stairs, do not go up. Get back, get back. Holy Oh, God, no. yeah, dude, oh holy my <laughs> Get back. I'm not doing any damage. Oh my God, dude. Get back, guys. Let me take you back for a second. This is 2014. Destiny came out for the Xbox One and PS4, and it came out for the Xbox 360 and PS3 as well. This is where technical problems came into play as Atheon had some mechanics that old gen consoles just weren't going to be prepared for. So back to the fight. Atheon had three players that seemingly random get teleported back into the future or pass with a relic to start. If you picked up the relic, you had to cleanse your teammates from blindness and kill the adds, while if you didn't pick up the relic but got teleported, you had to shoot, you guessed it, ORACLES BABY! If you made it past that minotaur in the past, or those three hobgoblins in the future, you were pretty much set. But without the vault weapon perks to break the oracles fast, you were probably screwed if you didn't have something great to circumvent. Not to mention that you had to upgrade weapons at the time. It wasn't as simple as, hey, I got a drop. Hey, here's all the perks. It was, hey, I got a drop. Now we're going to go grind for a whole week to upgrade this weapon. The players on the outside had to pop a detainment bubble and fend off a brand new enemy, Supplicants. These were brand new to Destiny 1, and these enemies would run up to you, shoot you as much as possible, and then explode in your face for an insta-kill if they could. After the team finished the future or pass room, it was time for damage. This gave you full super and the person with the relic most likely had their shield up for players to shoot through. And now here are the problems. This fight was completely broken on last gen hardware and even current gen. Bugs from Atheon not teleporting anyone, suppression fields upon being teleported, 
Floating Atheon? Atheon insta-kill. The relic health not working. The relic shield not working. No buff after clearing the room. Enemies regaining health. And many, many more. The fight was a great one for the time, but also showed the limitations in software and server capacity with a lot of the error codes too. This fight also had some serious cheese, but we will get to that in a little bit. But getting back to the fight in a not broken run, Team Prime Guard after 14 hours finally pulled it off. With a Monte Carlo in hand, they did it. Not too long after, Datto and the rest of Team 2 came in second place. Oh, he's almost dead. Keep going. He's all over me. He's all over me. Stay alive. Stay alive. Get in the stay alive. Stay alive. Stay alive. He's almost dead, guys. Just one more go. One, 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 one more. One more. One more. One more push. One more. Come on. Uh, you, uh, pass, 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 pass. Okay. Wrong pass. Wrong pass. Rotate. Come on. We got this. Stop. Run. Okay, come on. One more. One more. Go on. Help with ads, help with ads. Take yeah, it slow. Right yeah, right 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 Middle. Right. Enrage, enrage. Fine, fine, fine. Come on, come on. We got this. We're almost through, we're almost through. We're almost through. Okay, we're coming through. Right, we're coming through. This. Teleporter right now. Hurry up. Hurry right. up. Get through. Get through. He's, He's dead. dead. He's dead. Burn him. Oh my god. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. Yeah, baby! Let's go! Let's go! World second. Oh! Give me that! Dance in the middle. Oh! Dance in the middle, guys. Right here! Dance party. Dance! Dance with the Dance with the yeah, guys, good job. Oh good my job. God, dude. The fight had some unique rewards. The chance of the vision of confluence. A solar kinetic primary scout rifle with a short range red dot scope. Full auto for never having to tap the trigger, just hold the trigger. Perfect balance for no recoil and zen moment for stability. There was also the Atheon's epilogue, a void kinetic auto rifle, which had persistence, perfect balance, and glass half full, which made the bottom half of your magazine do more damage. The guaranteed drop was an all white shader called Chatter White. And the chance drops were the ship glass minuet, I think I said that right, and the Sparrow XVO Timebreaker, which had the overload perk, and by pressing both triggers, you went super fast at the risk of your Sparrow exploding. In all, when this fight worked, it was truly a special one. At times frustrating, but I will never forget my first clear. Running in blind, it took my team about 10 hours, but I wouldn't change it for the world. I really hope one day they bring Adept Kinetics back to the game and that unique sparrows like the Time Breaker see a return. I think that little bit of extra reason to keep running is what made the raid special. Nothing was like the Vault of Glass though. A raid full of atmosphere, mystery, reward, and perfect first time experience. This is the raid that started it all and would still keep most hardcore players playing the game to this day. I want to lend the question to you. What was your Vault of Glass story? What was your experience? I would love to hear some stories. Some of you are probably wondering where the mention of some other Vault of Glass memories are. And that's a great question. So let's get started. Vault of Glass was first beaten in 14 hours by Prime Guard, which is now math class, but something new was on the horizon, a level 30 variant of the Vault of Glass. 
this time with some immensely more difficult enemies, bosses, and arenas. The recommendation from players around the community to have a chance here was to be level 29. So pray to RNGesus to help you get gear from normal mode. Next, these fights were much more difficult with no reviving teammates. After that, there was more enemies and they were more aggressive. Now for the positives. The loot was everything from normal plus hard mode with its own set of loot which included the Praetorian foil, a fusion rifle that was probably the rarest gun in all of the raid and probably the whole year from the Oracle's encounter. This fusion rifle had glass half full, perfect balance, and reactive reload which is now kill clip. This perk gave you more damage after killing something and then reloading. Oh! Oh! I got it! I got it! <laughs> yes! 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 Oh my god! I was looking away from it! Oh my god! I got one too, Steve. I got the ones who freak out now. Oh, I got it! <laughs> From the Templar fight, there was the most notorious vault of glass weapon ever made. The Fatebringer. Dropping him. Please, please. Yes! Yes! Oh my god! This weapon was an adept arc kinetic hand cannon with firefly for popping heads and blowing them up, explosive rounds for even more damage on hits, and outlaw so every headshot became a quick reload. This weapon became the central part of the year one meta with the black hammer and galahorn which we already have covered in different videos being a part of it too. Remember that spot after templar we talked about earlier? Well, that spot now had another exotic potential chest, making the fifth chest a real thing. The Gorgon's encounter had more Gorgons and more health, but that chest over by the portal still wasn't there. That's odd. Gatekeeper had Praedeath's timepiece, which was another arc kinetic adept weapon, which had Headseeker for more headshot damage after body shots, perfect balance, and a perk I actually forgot about, secret round. This perk allowed the gun to give you a fourth burst if you missed one burst earlier. Kind of a cool perk, but to be honest, also kind of forgettable. All of these legendary weapons we have listed all share in the fact that they were preset rolls, no random element to them, but man, they were rare to get a drop. So much so, it took a whole year for some players to get them. And I don't think more than a few people had Praetorian foil in the whole entire community. However, the granddaddy of loot and challenge was Atheon, who had a unique exotic that would break the crucible, the Vex Mythoclast. 45 damage to the body, 56 for a headshot. The rate of fire is very good with about as much recoil as a Suros regime, but this weapon's current state is, it's broken as hell. Especially after I was on the other side of this weapon when it was on the enemy teams and not mine. It is way too strong in PvP, and I know that Bungie has said that exotics are supposed to feel a little overpowered, but that's it. Feel overpowered. The Vex Mytho class is overpowered. A solar kinetic fusion rifle auto rifle hybrid, which had the equivalent to Rampage, which was called crowd control. Upon kills, you get more damage for more killing power. This also had Zen Moment and an extended magazine. So strong of a weapon, and it broke the Crucible. Atheon also dropped the final piece of armor, the helmet for each class to finally hit level 30. Now, not everyone was able to beat hard mode because let's be real, it was ridiculously difficult. And it was really all about the loot for a lot of people. So what did we do? Well, let me introduce you to another unique element to this raid that would go into later raids, the cheese. The Vault of Glass was special, 
so much loot, great challenge, unique enemies, environment, mystery, exploration, encounter differences, so on and so forth. However, let me talk to you about the cheese that this raid had. What is cheese? Cheese is anything in the game that makes an encounter easier by not following intended mechanics, but does require some creativity to get the job done. At least that's my definition. This raid was like a 20 layer cheese fondue. Guys, I'm serious. Let's list off some of the quick ones first. Here we go. Sparrow into the vault. Conflux is just jump up high. Icebreaker oracles from the back of the map while a teammate jumps up to get the hidden ones. Sit on the side of the rock for Templar and just cleanse teammates while chunking the boss. I'm sure there's more simple ones, but let's get into the big boys. Pushing bosses off the map. Let me ask you a question. Do you have an AoE grenade? A Nova Bomb? Solar Radiance with Song of Flame to give your teammates more grenades? Perfect! Then you will win boss fights! If you sat there with the relics spawned on the Templar, it was really that simple. Hard mode? What for? Atheon? Send him to the pits. Cheese got so advanced that after Bungie patched it out, there was even more found! Especially with Atheon. It got so out of hand that I think if you ask anybody about the Atheon fight, if they remember doing it, they will probably talk about the bugs or the cheese. Did you ever cheese the Vault of Glass? Don't lie to me. No matter, the Vault of Glass served for some great memories and eventually those would be honored in a few ways. So let's talk about how this raid came back. Vault of Glass had some great lore to it leading in which got players very, very excited. Who was Kaber? Prey Death. What did it mean when you got erased from existence? Well, to give a small and probably bad explanation of the lore, the Guardians Kaber, the Legionless, Pahanan, and Prey Death ventured into the Vault of Glass on Venus a major confluence of the Vex Collective Network, and they were thwarted by the Templar and its oracles. Pahanan managed to escape but leaving Kaber to perish as the Vex took his ghost and became assimilated by their technology. But not before his light was reforged into the Aegis. You know, that relic that we use in the raid. A powerful shield that can alter the fate in the vault itself. Meanwhile, Praedeath was caught by the Gorgon's gates and became erased from the records of history. Yet he would actually remain imprisoned within the vault, during which he witnessed countless other events that took place in the alternate timelines surrounding the vault. That is only scratching the surface, but it shows that when the raid is great and the loot is great, we want to know the people, the areas, weapons, armor, all of them that are named after these people. Later down the line, there was even a mission to try to rescue Praedeath before he was trapped forever. The sixth chest would also be a part of a secret mission later down the line, and we will make a video about this another time, but just to basically give you a little bit of information on it, it was tied to the weapon no time to explain. An exotic pulse rifle, once again, making the mystery and story of the raid have meaning and purpose. I think this raid had it all in terms of loot, challenge, atmosphere, well, cheese, mystery, and encounters that differed from each other made the payoff of the story and the missions in later years feel that much better. This is not the end of the Vault of Glass's lineage though, because in Age of Triumph from Rise of Iron, even more came out. This section will be short, but I want to stress that the Age of Triumph gave us a return to the Vault of Glass with Adept Kinetics returning as exotic variants and legendary versions having no burn. Enemies were tuned, cheese was fixed, bugs patched, new challenges were added which gave emblems and a guaranteed exotic like the Templar challenge, 
where there were no teleports allowed, Atheon, which required everyone to teleport in at least once, the record books, which is now the triumph page in Destiny 2, tracked challenges and also had some time trials and fun gimmicks like killing all of those pesky Gorgons. But the real triumph in all of this was the ornaments for the gear. Seriously, one of the coolest looking armor sets and one that I wish Destiny went back to. These look tremendous and encourage players to look their best while also only being earned through the challenges or completion of the raid. This is exactly what I believe endgame challenges should provide. No advantages that hurt other players, but you can encourage them to want to improve if they see you rocking this set of armor. In all, the Vault of Glass is a special raid to me personally. It was my first raid. It encouraged many speedruns and low man challenges, and while it's not my personal favorite raid ever, I will say it will always hold the special place in my heart for the reasons I have listed in the video. I'd like to end on a couple of sentiments. For starters, I don't think the Vault of Glass should return, as we got to experience the best version of it already, and I want new experiences like it in the future, not more nostalgia as new content. I also think that the reason the Vault of Glass was so memorable was because it was very hard on release and early on. There was a reason 365 Gallahorn was required by a lot of teams in year 1. It was a hard fight and I miss fights being hard to reap the best loot. I lend the question to you though, what makes a raid great for you? I'd love to read some comments about this. Through the struggles, the cheese, the sounds of joy at a Fatebringer and the Mythoclass drop, and the sadness of the bugs, the Vault of Glass will always stand out and will always be the raid that started it all and defined Destiny. The raid that saved Destiny. Before we get to the bloopers, I want to leave with a huge thank you, and if you like this video, a like would be greatly appreciated as well as a subscription. If you want to come talk to me about Destiny or other games that you love, come over to the Twitch channel. The link will be in the description too. Anyways, this video took a while but was well worth it, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you for your time. So what did I get?